Hello everyone, Maria Trusa and Gina Capelli with Reflect and Reset with Maria and Gina, your favorite show because I know you guys are joining us. Uh, we are so excited with our followers. Thank you so much. We know that you could be doing something else, but you've decided that you want to here, watch the information that we're bringing to you because it is valuable for you and your family. And Gina is going to introduce our guests. We have a really great show today. So this is really special for us. So we're, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Lawrence Barnard and Gigi Arce, who is who works with the National Stem Cell Centers. So we're gonna get into all about what stem cells can do for you, you know, who gets them, why you would get them, why, why would they would harvest them, and how it's all done. So first, let's start with, you wanna start with Dr. Bernard? Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what exactly stem cells are? Okay. Tell us a little bit about you, because oh, we always question. like to be yeah, able to know who are you, you know, what do you do first, and then we'll go into the stem cells. All right, so my background is in neuromusculoskeletal medicine and osteopathic manipulative medicine. Uh, I did an undergraduate fellowship, which means I spent five years in medical school, not just the usual four, where I spent a year teaching and treating patients in exchange for them to pay my tuition for my extra year. Wow. Um, after that, I did a residency in neuromusculoskeletal medicine in the Bronx. Uh, after that, I went to work at a chronic pain practice on the east end of Long Island, where I spent a year learning injection therapies and regenerative medicine. Um, more recently, I started to train with Dr. David Mayer, our uh, medical director, to learn how to harvest and implement stem cells. Wow. So getting to your question about what are stem cells. Uh, as an embryo, initially we form three layers, an outer layer, an inner layer, and the deepest layer. Uh, so those three layers are the ectoderm, the endoderm, and the mesoderm. Ectoderm is the outer layer, it's your hair, your nails, your skin, your eye lenses. Endoderm is your gut tube. Everything in between is mesoderm. That's where you get the term mesenchymal stem cells. All the tissues in between your gut tube and your skin are mesenchyme and can turn into any of the tissues that sit in the middle of your body. So by definition, stem cells are cells that reproduce more of themselves. So if you had 100 stem cells, they would produce more stem cells. And depending upon the chemical nature of what your body's calling for, they can be transformed into cells that create bone, cartilage, muscle, connective tissue, blood vessels, everything in the center of your body. How long has it been discovered that you can utilize your own stem cells for treatments? that we're going to well, discuss. Yeah, there's, a, there's a fair amount of history to it. I would say, uh, you know, it depends which type. Umbilical cord blood cells, um, bone marrow cells, where there are, well, there's a, there's a lot to that. And then adipose derived, which is the most recent finding. And so what stem cells what are we, we talking with. about with you? What we work with is adipose derived adult mesenchymal stem cells. The really? reason I throw in adult is because these aren't fetal tissues. There's a lot less danger involved in using adult mesenchymal cells. These are your cells that are meant to do a job in your body. We take out, separate, and put back into your body. And how do you get them? Why don't you tell us what, because you're talking sure. Dr. Lehman. Okay, so I'll explain. Layman. <laughs> um, let's start with umbilical cord blood cells, right? They're always in the news. Mm -hmm. uh, those are cells that are taken from placenta and umbilical cord. Uh, at the time of a delivery. There's somebody else's cells that may be put into your body. And uh, there were a lot of problems around the beginning of this year, 2019, where people wound up with serious infections as a result. In order to keep the cells alive, they can't really be sterilized. So you're always taking a bit of a chance. They can be checked for certain viruses, they can be checked perhaps for certain diseases, but they can't be entirely cleaned or the cells are no longer alive. So that's umbilical cord blood. Part of why we don't really work with that much. Uh, bone marrow requires basically drilling a hole in your hip, taking out bone marrow, separating out the cells. Most of those cells are hematopoietic cells, uh, another doctor term. That means they're blood lineage cells, white cells, red cells, platelets, uh, less or fewer adult mesenchymal cells that can turn into the tissues that are hoped to repair your body. But they've been shown to be effective. 
Uh, their numbers are a lot lower than adipose-derived stem cells, and your bone marrow tends to age as you age. So you get many fewer cells as a person gets older. Adipose-derived stem cells stay pretty high in numbers. Uh, shortly after birth, they drop a bit, but they stay the same pretty much through the rest of your life. And adipose, how do you say it? Adipose means fat. Adipose fat. fat. I was going to say, let's adipose. put it in yeah. our term, fat. So okay. these are cells that are <clears throat> in your fat. They are sequestered, kind of locked into your fat. That's, that's where they, they spend their time. As your body calls for them, you send them to an area that's in need. Uh, you know, some people's systems are a little overtaxed and overburdened. So maybe they're not able to generate the number of cells to the area that they need, and that's part of why I think stem cell uh, injections are so effective. So let's talk about um, what you... The process? Yeah, the process. And then we're okay. going to get to UGG to tell us how you manage all of this. So we bring you into an operating room. We clean your belly just like for any other surgery, although we're not entering a real body cavity, we are going just under the skin. So we prepare you just like you would be having any other belly surgery. Very clean process. Is it local anesthesia? Or we're, is it? we're getting to that. <laughs> okay. After your belly's cleaned with betadine, we create a, I create a quarter of an inc incision with a scalpel. It's just under the skin so I can get into the fat layer. Um, prior to that, I add a little bit of anesthesia medicine just under the skin like a little mosquito bite. Oh, wow. Typically, that's the part of it that hurts the most, that little mosquito bite. After that, the skin is numb. The incision really doesn't hurt much. Uh, we use a cannula, which is basically a straw, although it's thinner than a straw and a little bit maybe longer than a straw that you might be used to. And we insert that slowly and gently into your fat. That can be a little painful because you have no anesthesia medicine through the belly yet. We have a bag of IV fluid hanging, which has anesthetic medicine in it. And we infuse that into your belly slowly. So basically what we're doing is we're swelling your belly with fluid and anesthesia medicine. Once it's in, we allow you 15 minutes to get numb. And once you're numb, we switch cannulas. And we change from a cannula that we call an infuser that puts the liquid into your belly, and we switch it with a shredder that will actually tear up your fat a little bit while you're anesthetized. We take three syringes, about three ounces of fat, and fluid, right, because we filled you with fluid. That's the chemical environment that your stem cells need to be active, right? So we then send it to our lab. Our lab is in Great Neck. It's an FDA-registered lab, and we process the cells ourselves. Now, what makes us a little bit different, which I know will be one of your next questions, is we're a very conservative practice. We don't use any chemicals in the process except to freeze your cells. So umbilical cord blood cells, typically you'll get maybe 5 to 10 million cells. Bone marrow is very similar. Without a post-derived stem cells, you can get anywhere, our average is between 200 million and 500 million cells. Huh. Although recently I harvested from an 83-year-old woman and I got over a billion cells from her. Wow. There's no way to know until after the process how many cells. Now those cells are sent to an independent lab which checks not only for cell count, like you would like a CBC or any other blood count, but also viability. How alive and healthy and vibrant are these cells? Right. After that, we've determined by your medical diagnosis or what your needs are, how many doses we want to separate out your number of cells into. It can be six, it can be eight, it can be four. And we freeze cells for you. So our freezing process is the same process used for in vitro fertilization. I can't expect to take an embryo, freeze it, basically kill it, and plant it in your body and hope that you're going to have a baby. I have to keep that, that alive, that tissue alive. So we use a particular type of antifreeze that surrounds the cell and protects it. So as spicules of ice form, right, icicles, it doesn't rip through your live cells. So that's what helps us to keep your cells alive before we implement them. Okay. Into fascinating. A, into a trouble area. Right? That's why so, I love this, because it is yeah, it's fascinating. It's, it's to me fascinating. As well. So and now this is for um, joint pain. Well, let's, let's, use, you know, yeah, let's the, find out the treatments that you could yeah. now. Okay. So this brings us to an interesting area because there are a lot of people doing a lot of different things and making a lot of promises out there. You know, as I stated, we're a very conservative practice. Uh, starting in 2020, the FDA is requiring everybody who does stem cell work to have what they call an IND, 
investigational new drug status. That's paperwork that shows they're monitoring you, they're keeping an eye on things, you're giving them data. And you need an IND for each individual diagnosis that you want to work with. It's time consuming, it's very expensive, so we're starting with joint pain. That's typically what has done best with stem cell treatment, and joint pain can be a problem associated with all kinds of other issues, right? You don't typically just have knee pain, although some people do, and, and those are the people who typically do best, but if knee pain is a part of some other diagnosis you have, we can still work with you. If you have bone on bone, yes, because I know I hear that a lot for people, do you need surgery or can stem cells help you prolong it? Or Well, that's part of the question we're trying to answer, right? We have had a lot of uh, really nice outcomes with people. As part of our seminars that we offer, one of the slides shows an x-ray of a man who used to be a kind of a long distance runner. He would run seven miles a few times a week. And it shows that he was bone on bone. So let me just explain what that means. The bone lining is something we call articular cartilage. It's a special type of cartilage. It's not like um, cartilage that gets torn inside of a knee, let's say. It lines the coating of the bone, it lubricates, uh, it, it gives off fluid, and it keeps everything working smoothly, okay? And uh, we've, we've seen positive results getting articular cartilage to return to areas that, right? So in a, as an example in that x-ray, you might see no black space between a, in a knee x-ray. I don't know how much you know about it, but you know, you would see bone here, you'd see some space, and then you'd see the other bone sitting on top. In an x-ray, x-rays will only show bone. So where you see black is actually the articular cartilage. Mm -hmm. When the black returns, it means some of the articular cartilage has returned. Has returned. And it grows back, yes. you're saying the stem cells? Well, have... the stem cells are cells that can create cartilage producing cells. So we are actually really going to have a seminar here. Um, do you remember the date? I believe it's the 18th of July. The 18th of July. So we're going to have a seminar. We're, you're going to see we're going to promote it a lot. So for people that want to come and actually have maybe even a mini consultation yes. and be able to find and, and refresh their memory as to what we're covering here today. Um, so joints, any joints, it could be your shoulder, yeah. knees, so, Dr. Mayer's been collecting data for over seven years. We've only been allowed to do this work for about eight years in the United States. And typically, uh, the data show that knees do the best, shoulders and hips next. And actually, maybe this is a great time for Gigi to kind of talk about yeah. her experience. Hi. <laughs> so Gigi, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do within, within the company. Um, I wear many hats. <laughs> Uh, jack of all trades. Jack of all trades. So my background is in, in the medical field for about a little over 12 years. I've always been a multi-specialty practices, meaning that I've been exposed to everything from cosmetics to plastic to orthopedics, um, pain management, you name it. Um, about a little over three years ago, I was introduced to stem, the stem cell world. And I was happened to be suffering from bilateral knee pain. I was suffering from loss of cartilage. I had a torn ACL. Um, my patella was attacking. I was a, a complete mess. Everybody in the office was like, why doesn't she like retire or something? Because I was always in pain and cranky. Um, <coughs> stem cells was introduced to me, so it was pretty new. It was pretty new to some of the doctors that I worked with as well, and I trusted. So um, they, you know, they, they suggested that I try it, but I was so afraid, I had all these questions. So part of my job was to like, coordinate and get doctors interested and get people interested. Um, and it's why I always had the toughest questions, like, oh my gosh, is, what, what can this do? What are the side effects and what is this? I was always asking these questions because they said, you know, I had MRIs done and they told me I needed bilateral knee surgery. There was no avoiding that. Um, and when I heard that, I was devastated because I was like, I'm. I'm a single mom, what am I gonna do? I need yeah, to work. So I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. And, and a hip surgery, by the way. I had a bursitis of my hip in the, in the same, all three areas. Um, so I started to watch people get stem cells. Um, basically, they were not chemically manipulating the cells. So therefore, all that they were giving back were the cells that were taken out of my body, pretty much put into activation, 
injected into the joints, and that was it. <clears throat> so I started to watch people, people, patients that I had known for, that had been coming in for pain management and were getting all these cortisone injections. They were getting all these injections and getting you know relief for a little while, and then the pain would come back worse. Yeah, yes. So it was, it was incredible to me to say that, like, wow, you know, Mr. Smith or whatever, you're feeling better, wow. Girl, I've been, I haven't been, a, I've been running, you know, I heard, heard all these different stories, so I finally said, I'm ready, I'm gonna do this. Um, I was, I was in pain, so much pain, I couldn't go up and down stairs. Uh, I couldn't lay on my hip, I would wake up from excruciating pain. Within two weeks of having that um, procedure, my pain was completely gone. And how long ago was this? This was over three years ago. And how it long does this last? So I, this three years later, I still can't predict the weather. And anyone who suffers from joint pain, anyone who can, you know, you're the forecast yes. person. I'm constantly like having a bad, I'm like, oh my gosh, my hair. I, I forgot my umbrella because I was so used to the, my body telling me that the, it was gonna rain or it was gonna snow. Um, that's a good side effect. Wow, three, yeah. years. <laughs> three, three years. Three years. Three years. Three Pretty years. Three years. So the amazing thing about um, um, National Stem Cell Centers is that we're able to extract uh, you know, three ounces of fat, and from that fat, without chemically manipulating, without expanding and growing cells, we're able to get in the 100 million, the average is 100 million range of cells. You don't need that much to treat, you know, for one, for the one treatment. So we're able to take the rest of your cells, store them, and put them into cryo freezer in case you need them in the future. So I personally- How long would it last? So we, we can store for up to two years now. Um, you know, we are looking into lifetime storage, but right now we can store for up to two years. Is it only because of the capacity, or they don't live? Oh, because longer of the freezer that we have. No. Oh, okay. But the they, they could live forever. I mean, they could. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So 13 to okay. 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. So we can have. Yes. Yeah, so there, there are, but it's just very expensive, and to get into all of that. Um, so you're able to, so within a three year period, I want to say this, I did have a booster injection because I had actually never had my hip injected uh, about a year and a half in. Um, the stem cells travel through, you know, once you inject them, they travel. They go through your, your body. They don't just stay in the name. They don't, they, they will stay, they go where there's inflammation. So if you have inflammation, they go where there's inflammation and damage. So if, obviously they're going to work there, but there's so many cells that they go to work in other places. Um, so initially I got re pain relief in my hip and I got pain, pain relief in other areas, but in the, about a year and a half later, it started to bother me a little. So thankfully I had cells in storage and I was able to take care of that. So that was, wow. so within three years, a little over three years, that you, she's a runner. Drill another hole in her hip. No, I mean, bone marrow is that way. Every time you harvest, you need to drill a hole. And, yeah. And, get and that's very painful. Yeah. That's so, very painful. Yeah, it's a painful, to get bone marrow, it's painful extraction. It's a painful to recover from, and you don't get enough cells. And I think you need a full OR for that, don't you? Mm. Can you do it anywhere? Can you do it in like a? It depends on the doctor and what okay. they're comfortable doing. Um, but if you don't get, because as you age, bone marrow, um, your bone marrow counts decrease. Mm -hmm. Well, with fat, um, age is not really a factor. We've gotten patients, Dr. Barnard just harvested a patient, I think well into her 70s recently, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we got billions, mm -hmm. look, 80s. Well, billions of cells. We were like, we kept doing the numbers. We was like, wait a minute, what? What was unique about her? I mean, was she in great shape? It's you know, she yeah, has. she's interesting. Eighty three and eighty one, she started doing yoga, and that's part of why she came for stem cells because yeah. her yoga was being affected, and she wanted to just feel better and more comfortable. Yeah. So, so very yoga special. is um, oh yoga, yeah. Well, she just started at, at eighty one. She started to do yoga. She it's wasn't it's doing never it before too that. late. There's never. no excuses out there. So you know what the other thing is, Maria. You know, we're starting a not-for-profit, as some of you, I think we've mentioned before, and we're trying to help people have surgeries that aren't life-threatening. Right. And but think about it. We we looked at the woman with the with the with the, 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 the hip replacements. Yeah. And it was how much? Like it's like fifty thousand. Fifty thousand dollars. If this is something that could help her. And that's if everything goes well. Yeah. Uh, one complication. Yes, right. One right. rejection. Right. Yeah. Prosthetic. Right. One infection. You know, those are the things that you can't count on. You always have to weigh, you know, in medicine we talk about the risks benefit ratio. Yeah. Right. And that, that is the reason actually you guys are here because they do, they're in our office every other Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And we started being curious because Gina and I are extremely curious. Like we're always thinking. Everything done that we can. 
Yeah, we, we always thinking different ways of bringing uh, services to the community. And yes. in our minds, we have this nonprofit that's called Promise to Aid that we are very excited because within a, a few weeks, yes. we should be able to get our 501c3. Good girl, she got it. Right. <laughs> I had such a hard time remembering those numbers. Um, but we're going to have it ready and we're going to start uh, having events yeah. where we're going to be Raise money. raising money for the community that we're taking care of. And patients, we have the perfect example. We have a lady that needs a hip replacement, like Gina was saying. But this is something that she would try. And maybe she the nonprofit will be able to. She has bad insurance, so she couldn't afford the $50,000, right. and that was at a discounted rate. Right. Wow. And it's ridiculous. It's unachievable for her to even think she could have this surgery. Yeah, and these days, a lot of orthopedists are not taking insurance. So even That's if right. she had insurance, she may still have to pay out of pocket. It, it's unaffordable. So this is, in our minds, this is one way that, you know, it's out of the box. Like, we, we have to start thinking out of the box. So if you, anybody out there wants to have a consultation, they, is, uh, do you have to pay for the consultation? No, we, we give free consultations. We're here every other Tuesday. Um, you can give us a call. You can call the office. What's um, the number that they can call? Do you? Uh, I. Well, you can go on the website nationalstemcellcenters.com, and it will get it lists all the locations that we have. And we're, we're happy to give you a free consultation, and also we're having a seminar yeah. very soon. So please come to that. We're gonna have a whole team of us are gonna be here afterwards. If you wanna have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with Dr. Barnard, you're welcome to do so, either to stay after or make an appointment to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation. And then, you know, anyone who can't get a hold of them, you call us. Yeah, yes. We'll always connect you. We gotta make sure that our, our front desk has yes, that information. absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So let's talk about the question about beauty, uh, bringing stem cells to the aesthetic right. side. So okay. I, we do PRP, right? We do yeah. PRP with the blood. Yes. So now tell us the difference between the stem cells going so into that. Stem cells, okay, so platelet-rich plasma is, is platelet-rich plasma. There are no stem cells, and the stem cells are your natural healing cells. So basically, they, they can renew, rejuvenate, and restore damaged cells, including you know, skin cells. How about the sun damage? Sun all damage, damage, all of that um, hair. Uh, I can tell you a little bit, I don't want to go too much into it because we don't have a lot of time, but I know for me, one of the things I used to do before I had stem cell therapy was I would draw in my eyebrows because I would had a lot of bald spots. But as you can see, I have full eyebrows now. So I noticed so many things aesthetic-wise, like my skin improved, my, my um, mood improved, my energy levels went up after stem cell therapy, my hair started to grow like crazy. But you didn't even inject it into your hair or into your face, it just went there. Yes, so basically stem cells can improve the quality of life in many ways. Um, come and visit us so you can hear, we can talk more about you it. You know, it's funny because I suffer from, um, I have uh, androgen alopecia. Yes. Uh, and a, most of my other sister does too, and my other, there's three of us had it in the family. And I was losing my hair by the handfuls, and I think we spoke about this because I was supposed to be the test dummy for the PRP, uh, mm -hmm. for the stem cells in the face. But which, give me time, I will still do it. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking, and I have a lot of people that are suffering because of the hair loss. And, you know, PRP that, helps. Can but it, how about the stem cells? The stem you cells. Use the stem cells? Can we inject like the way is PRP is being used? Yes. Yes. In the head. Mm -hmm. Just inject yes. it into the head. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Because I know, I mean, a lot of people, I know guys, we're getting a lot of men actually yes. that are coming to our aesthetic center for the PRP. But Which this is, is another I mean, option. Actually, but this is a higher level option. Well, part of what PRP does is it, it calls stem cells to the area. You're delivering it. Okay. You're deliver Instead of calling them, you're already just putting exactly. them there. Exactly. So you're planting them there, and then they stay there, and they go every place else. Wow, this is really interesting. I know. We have to do it. I know. <laughs> you're gonna need it after you. If she keeps running, she's running the marathon, the New York Marathon, and right. this poor thing is suffering. Yeah, already. I'm, I'm, more, I'm better for my knee, <laughs> but my hamstring <laughs> went the other day. So it's uh, that's the challenge that I'm having. You know, I, I need to make sure that the marathon is in November, November third. And uh, I'm training, I started training three weeks ago, but now I've been off this week because of my, my hamstring. That's what happens I, when you get old. 
not that old oh, yet. Okay. But yeah, my exactly. knee, so you need stem for that. Yeah, my knee, my left knee, uh, I definitely have issues. But I did a treatment of platelet-rich plasma. Mm -hmm. I did two, and uh, I have, I don't hurt. Although after a long run, yes, if I don't move and uh, will you recommend ice, ice, ice after? I don't know what we use. Ice or heat. Yeah. Some people say heat. Some it's, people say inflammation is ice usually. Right? Yeah, early on. Afterwards, you, you know, you need good blood flow, right? You need to nourish an area, and you need to have good drainage. Otherwise, things get unhealthy. It's like running water. Running water stays clear, but if you block it, and the water just sits and stagnates, you get all kinds of things. So that's the treatment that you yeah. do with the drainage? Oh, yeah, that you saw me do early yeah. in mass. Yeah, that's part of it. Can you do that on the knee? Of course. So for her pain that she's that's having? That's a hands-on, yeah. How about for the hamstring? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. well, okay. I'll keep it for mm -hmm. Because I gotta get shows. back to running. Yeah, you you have have to get back to, to the body shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that is awesome. Yeah. Well, the um, so I want to repeat that they're here um, mm -hmm. every other Tuesday, and if you wanted to get information, you can go on their website, which is National Stem Cell Centers, that's plural, centers.com. So it's National Stem Cell Centers dot com. And feel free to, you know, ask for us. If you're in the office, you can just ask for an appointment and I'll give yeah. you our mm -hmm. schedule um, to meet with Dr. Barnard or one of our stem yeah, cell Yeah, and actually, you, like you said, you can, you can see them right here. So it's not like you have to travel, yeah. you know, to Long Island or the city, you can meet them right here. Mm -hmm. So, and the seminar, we'll, we're going to post that yeah. probably in the next couple of weeks. We'll yeah. post the seminar sure will be on the 18th. You'll mm -hmm. be able to register and we're going to have it right here at Fort May. And, um, and you'll be able to get all the information about stem cells and you know everything that, uh, any questions you would have, you can do that. But in, in the meantime, if you want to be seen before then, obviously then you can just uh, reach out to us and, and we'll be able to get you a consultation. And can I just, before we end, what else, um, and I know that you guys are focusing on joints um, and possibly, you know, beauty, mm -hmm. but um, what else can it help? Once FDA gets their hands into this and realizes that it's a good What's the future? Like, what's the future what's look like, right? That's what I mean. I mean, yeah, somebody with heart disease, somebody with liver problems. Is this something that could possibly help these people? So a lot of that's being investigated using right. fetal cells at large research institutions uh, in terms of like regrowing tissue. These are the cells that do that job. But I don't expect, you know, in an outpatient setting that we're going to be able to do that you know, in the near future. Mm -hmm. You know, the keys for the FDA are, um, they want you to be conservative, they want you to minimally manipulate the tissue. They don't want you adding chemicals, they don't want you playing with the cells. Uh, they don't want you getting five million cells and turning them into 50 million cells. These are all things going on and this is part of why I think they're really starting to keep an eye on the industry. Uh, and that's why we work so closely with them so they know what we're doing and they, you know, Right. We're supported in so a way. So you're getting right. guidance. Yeah, absolutely. Then, yeah, because you want to be safe. You know, people have been blinded. People have been, you know, infected in, in ways that have been really detrimental. And in part, it's because of how the cells were handled. If you read an article about stem cells, typically they don't tell you how they were harvested, where they were from, what was done to them. Hmm. So you don't know. You can't compare yeah. one story to the next. So what is the right question to ask for those so, people out there that are interested in maybe not coming, you know, they won't come to you, but they are go to a place near them. What should they be looking for? What type of stem cells are they using? Umbilical cord, bone marrow, adipose derived. What are they doing to the cells chemically? Like how do they process them? Where do they process them? Is the lab so FDA it's registered? Almost like they're not it is the lab FDA registered. That's FDA one way that. That's but one one good question to ask. And if they say yes, they should be able to like show it because it is public knowledge um, when someone uses a, an FDA registered lab. And it's also if they're not taking it from me, then the question is where is it coming from? It's somebody else's cells, which is so always a danger. Right. right? Always so always any chemical yeah. that's used in the processing is something that your body may react to, right? So typically, if I were to give you lidocaine, you know, an anesthetic medicine, it's the preservatives usually that you're affected by. It's not the lidocaine, right? So when I use lidocaine for uh, pain injections, 
I use something that's preservative free. Mm -hmm. Because I know that people, if they're going to react to anything, usually it's the preservative. Right. right? That's part of the problem yeah. with immunizations and other medications, it's the preservatives that you are affected by. So it's very important to know how your cells, even if they are your cells, are being processed. So Hopefully this has been a very informative show. Mm -hmm. um, we are at the end of our show. Again, it, it goes so goes fast. so fast. We always say it's 30 minutes. It's like, boom, you blink and you're done. But we love bringing you information. We love coming to you every Wednesday and talking to you. Thank you so much for the support that you're giving us. Although today, you. today is Tuesday. Uh, yeah, we switch, <laughs> we switch the day because sometimes we have to accommodate our yes, guests. Right. So in the time, so normally it's Wednesday at five. So I'm, I'm yes. see, we are creatures of habits. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> we are proving it. Right. All right, so it's Tuesday afternoon, it's Tuesday. not Wednesday. <laughs> so we're good. So remember to like us, but we want to thank yeah, you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you guys are extremely informative, and uh, we love having you here. Not only are you guys uh, oh, very here. professional, and but really nice people. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye. Remember to like us. Come visit us. Bye. Bye.